are here watching God continue to work. The gifts of the Spirit being manifested, God's Holy Spirit falling down upon us, rising up from within us. And what a message, what a word for us to declare the gospel. The title of tonight's message is, What Are We Building? Part 2. Or Can We Build It? And How Will We Build It? What we are building is our life for the Lord or not for the Lord. What are we building, church, in this day and age? I believe it's a great honor to stand before you as under-shepherd and pastor because I believe here at Praise there are more and more people who are saying, I want to build a kingdom and help build the kingdom of God both in heaven and on this earth. I want to build according to the Word of God. I want to build a family tree that will cause heaven to rejoice because the Scripture says, Train up a child in the way they should go, and they will not depart from it when they are old. I want to build a part of a community and a church that will exalt the wonderful name of Jesus. Praise be to God. And righteousness exalts a nation. And as we learned in men's group, it is God the Father who brought exaltation to Jesus Christ. And there's no other name more powerful than that of Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. And Paul writes there that every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. What are we building? If you guys, before you get too comfortable, would stand with me for the reading of God's word. Psalm 127, verses 1 and 2 and then we're going to look at Matthew chapter 7 tonight. And I will be reading from the New King James Version of the Bible. Psalm 127, verses 1 and 2. Unless the Lord builds the house, they labor in vain who built it. Unless the Lord guards the city, the watchman stays awake in vain. It is vain for you to rise up early to sit up late, to eat the bread of sorrows, for so he gives his beloved sleep. Matthew chapter 7, beginning at verse 24. Jesus speaking, Therefore whoever hears these sayings of mine and does them, I will liken him to a wise man who built his house on the rock. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew and beat on that house, and it did not fall, for it was founded on the rock. But everyone who hears these sayings of mine and does not do them will be like a foolish man who built his house on sand. And the rain descended, the floods came, and the winds blew and beat on that house, and it fell and great was its fall. And so it was when Jesus had ended these sayings that the people were astonished at his teaching, for he taught them as one having authority and not as the scribes. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading of his word tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. What are we building? Can we build it? Can we build something bigger and better than God in the foundation of his word, in the foundation of time? Can we, in the 21st century, begin to build a heritage and legacy and build a house and build it bigger and better without taking into consideration the will, the word, and the thought process of our Lord and Savior? As we look at Psalm 127, this is the song of King Solomon. And this is a powerful psalm. It almost sounds like a proverb if you read it closely enough. You would think if you did not know the address that we were in the book of Proverbs, especially when knowing that Solomon is the author. But we are in Psalm 127. We are in a place where God is going to be worshipped and declared, and there is lamentation before the living God. And here there is also wisdom that is found in Psalm 127. And here, if there is a person who is going the wrong way and building a life for themselves based on something that is not righteous, 
something that is not godly, something that is not according to the word of God, verse 1 tells us the consequence. Unless the Lord builds the house, they labor in vain who build it. Are we building tonight a house in which the Lord is the architect and his pl blueprint, his holy word, is the design in which we are following, and therefore it is the Lord building, or are we working in vain? Tonight, there is no doubt about it. The adversary is roaring, but as Crystal told me earlier, he's roaring like a lion, but he has no teeth in comparison to when Jesus Christ is on the scene. When our Lord is there, there will be blessing. The last thing the adversary wants is a house that the Lord is building at 89 Congress Street. That's the last thing he wants. So a tormented soul, you would think, wow, what in the world is going on? Why is it all happening simultaneously? Because we're not wrestling against flesh and blood. We're wrestling against principalities. We're wrestling against things we cannot see. Church, I can tell you in standing before you, just as I stood before you this morning, that the adversary was working out there. And as my wife said, the devil met God here today. And guess what? We're still standing, praise the Lord. We are victorious. Conviction is nothing more than strong desire until it is tested. And today we have been tested. But we have been found faithful. Why? Because it is the Lord building this house. It had been real easy for us to say, let's just cancel tonight and go home. It been real easy for me to say, well, i got to hit the road anyway. So why don't we, it's been a long day for us all. Why don't we just call it a night? Why don't we just, I'm just going to hit the road and travel and I'll pray about it. That's what the adversary wants. He wants us to close our doors. Guys, he didn't want us up there chatting today about Philippians 2. He didn't want us getting closer to him. As, as men, ladies, he did not. He, he would have loved for everybody just to go on home and not to testify about the goodness of our Lord and Savior. But it is God who is building. And if it is God is building, our labor is not going to be in vain because it is God that is blessing. It is God's hand that is upon us. Church, I don't know if you guys know this, but God has been good to us in the midst of COVID. He has been so good to us. Souls being one financial blessing church think about this we put on the roof a sixty thousand dollar roof in the midst of covid that seems crazy but it is god who is building it and guess what crystal has no bill she needs to pay god has been good tomorrow these lights are coming down we had a little delay just in scheduling but tomorrow they're coming down crystal's uh, chris is going to pick them up for me praise the lord because i got to get out of town he's going to get them praise god that's going to be a great honor, brother, you standing there picking up those lights and say, God's been good to us. God has been good. What are we building at home? Is God building our homes? And I don't mean, you know, just what we see in the bedroom or the living room or the den. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. We stand on that. We believe that. We teach that to our daughter every day. She probably gets tired of me saying it. But she needs to know it is God who is building our house. It is the legacy. If you go on, I just want to read it because of, you know, Brandy's testimony and our precious children, praise the Lord. And, of course, God has been uh, so awesome to us. But look at this verse, just real quick. Verse 3, Behold, children are a heritage from the Lord. The fruit of the womb is a reward. Think about that. Our heritage are our children. What are we building for our children? What is the inheritance that they are going to receive? You say, Pastor, well, I'm going to leave them $100,000. That's wonderful. But the last time I checked, I got a U-Haul in my driveway right now. But that U-Haul never follows a hearse. I can leave my daughter a quarter of a million dollars. But that's not going to buy a ticket into heaven. The greatest heritage is to know Jesus. And I praise God that she does. It blesses me every time she walks up there to get communion. It blesses me to hear her testify about our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. It blesses me when she sings with us. It blesses me when I see children 
love the Lord and partaking. We had one child today who did not want to leave until she took communion. It's exciting to watch what God is doing. And they are an heritage. Our children are a heritage from the Lord. What are we building for them? What example are we setting for them? As a society, what part do we play? Well, I'm here to tell you tonight, unless the Lord is building it, and you are letting him build it on his word and his presence through his Holy Spirit, if, if we do not do that, we are laboring in vain. We are wasting our time. We have gotten off track somewhere. We've lost our way. But if the Lord builds, therefore our labor will not be in vain, but instead it will be an honor. It will be blessed by God. It will be done with a purpose. It will be done not with an idea to trump God or do something different, but instead to honor him. Praise be to God. How many want to honor God as you build? I do praise the Lord. I do praise the Lord. Unless the Lord guards the city, the watchman stays awake in vain. We heard tonight from the Lord the importance of a watchman. The prophet Ezekiel speaks about being a watchman on the wall. But unless it is, guard, it is the Lord guarding us and protecting us, we are basically staying awake for no reason. Because without God's protective eye, we will be prey to an enemy's attack. We will be awake but out to lunch when the attack comes forth, and therefore we will be defeated. Church, I can tell you today God was protecting us, and we didn't know an attack was on the way. Why? Because God's building this. This house is God built. The labor is done for righteous reasons. It is God who is watching over us. Praise be to God. It is God who is guarding us. Praise the Lord. It is God who showed up today when we were at a place of bewilderment, when we were at a place of great disarray when it came to what we were dealing with from folks with tormented souls of various ages. But church, God guarded us. If it is not God, we labor, we stay awake in vain. Our labor is useless when we think we can build something better than God or that we can protect ourselves. You understand that? You understand that as we build, it must be God who is doing the work. It must be a, a, an opportunity. It must be a way that cannot cause us to take shortcuts to build it away from the word and blessing of God. We must let God have full control of what is taking place in our lives. It must be God who is building. It must be God who is guarding and protecting us. Because the moment we push God out is the moment we become vulnerable. You don't believe me? Ask Israel. Ask the nation of Israel, the northern kingdom, or the southern kingdom of Judah. And church, I'm here to tell you, unless America wakes up very quickly, we are going to find out our labor is in vain and our protection is not anything. I don't care how great the United States military is. It is God's grace that has been shed upon us. It is God's blessing upon our nation. It is God's favor upon our nation. And I don't care if we have the greatest soldiers in the world. We will melt like snow. Especially when God is the judge. Protection. What are we building today? It is verse 2 of Psalm 127. It is vain for you to rise up early, to sit up late, to eat bread of sorrows. It is vain for us to go through all this process thinking that we can be stronger, 
we can be better. We can be more alert. We can, we can, we can. The bottom line is we can't find the floor if we fell out of bed unless God allowed it. Do you know your breath you just breathed is a gift from God? We want to do more, more, more. We want to work more, more, more. We want to handle more, more, and more stress. We want to be busy, busy, busy. And we think we're building something back better because we are busy. Here the psalmist is saying, you can get up early, you can stay up late, you can eat the bread of sorrows, you know, you can do all that kind of stuff thinking you are doing all this great sacrificial stuff. And you're doing absolutely nothing at all. The people of the northern kingdom, as I preached this morning, they thought they could replace the brick with hewn stone. They thought they could replace the sycamore with a cedar. And God brought judgment upon them because the human race in the northern kingdom of Israel thought they could do things better than God. Church, do you know there are people working 18, even 20 hours a day, making good money, running from here and there, but they have no prayer life, they have no power, therefore they're like Popeye without the spinach. They are working, 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 trying to find value and purpose and cannot find it. There are folks today, young people even, who are staying up all night long, trying to find contentment, and inside their soul is raging. What are they building today? What is going on in our world today? Well, here the Bible says, for so he, God, gives his beloved sleep. Studies say we should get, at least get eight hours of sleep a night. It's okay to rest, but do you know in our culture most people are not sleeping well today? Most people need a sleep aid of some sort because they cannot sleep. Either they're physically struggling, emotionally struggling, they're tormented, they cannot sleep. Some of you here tonight don't know the last time you had a good eight hours of sleep. Some of us here know exactly what Solomon is talking about. But I'm here to tell you God wants to help us. God doesn't want our labor to be in vain. He doesn't want us up early and staying up late and eating the bread of sorrows or whatever may come our way just enough to survive when instead he wants to give us sleep. He wants to give us rest. He wants to give us peace. What are we building, church? What are we building today? Clearly in our culture, something's not right. Clearly in our culture, it's funny. I can get just as much response on our Facebook chat at 2 o'clock in the morning as I can at 2 o'clock in the afternoon. People send me messages. You up past this 2 o'clock in the morning? Something is wrong. Or someone will say, Pastor, I, haven't, I didn't get any sleep last night. Something is wrong when we need to take a pill to go to sleep and take a pill to get up. Something is wrong. And one thing's for sure, we will reap what we sow. What are we building? Jesus, as he closes out the Sermon on the Mount, gives great instruction for his followers to build on a rock. And tonight I want to finish this sermon by encouraging you, exhorting you to build on a rock and not sinking sand. A rock that is Jesus Christ, our Lord. A rock that will not move. A rock that is, uh, should the storms of life. Terry sang about it in his testimony tonight. God will bring us through. God will work. God will guide. God will direct. But building on a rock is harder than building on sand. Building on a rock takes efforts. It takes a standard of righteousness. 
It takes an understanding of the blueprint of God. It is not the easiest way. It is not the easiest way to carve out a rock, to put that as your foundation. It is not the easiest way to do what Jesus is declaring you to do. But what are we building? Are we building something that's convenient and easy? Or are we going to build something that takes effort? That as the storms of life are raging, we can survive. Jesus said, those that endure to the end shall be saved. Church, we must build on a rock. We cannot take shortcuts. Pray for this congregation. Pray for this congregation that is becoming more hungry for Jesus Christ, more so each and every week I see it. But they are going to be confronted with something that takes a great deal of effort or something that does not. Church, it takes great discipline to build on a rock. But if you want to survive the storms of life, if you want to survive the winds and the waves and the turbulence that comes your way, we must build on a rock and not on sand. You know it rains on the just and the unjust. One of my biggest concerns for, for the PAG community here is that we don't do very well handling stress. We don't do very well when it gets a little hot in the kitchen. And then we wonder where God is. Well, church, I'm here to tell you, if we build on a rock, we will know where God is. We will know that we'll get through the storm rather than tapping out on our faith, rather than tapping out on our Lord. We will know that our seed has been planted on good soil when we build on a rock because as difficult times come, we don't die out. Instead, we live a life faithful unto the Lord. Church, pray for the millennials. I don't think there's any millennials here tonight. I don't think they are. They're, they're, the, they're Z. Millennials are 22 to 38. I believe that's right. All right? Pray for this generation. Pray for the generation Z with Chloe and Montana. Pray for John's generation. They're all in that same generation. Pray for these guys. As should the Lord tarry, we're going to need leaders who know how to build on a rock. When I was talking to my father last night, and we know my dad has short-term memory issues, and as I was talking to him, and we were talking about childhood years, my father worked in the nuclear energy field worked his way up from the tool room all the way to um, uh, through dissymmetry. And my father was talking about his years as a deacon. My father served 38 years. And he said, just what's going to happen when the older folks are gone? I'm not sure that the generation that is raising children today understand the sacrifice that we had to make when we were leaders in the church raising our children. And I got to thanking my father many times would work an 18-hour day, get home about 6 o'clock in the morning, sleep a few hours, get in the car, in the passenger seat, and my mother would drive us to church. And a couple nights later, he'd go to a board meeting. He'd say, Just, would you like to visit with me with so-and-so? And still find time to come to a game but still find time to do the Lord's work. And we had a lot of adversity in our family. My maternal grandmother was diagnosed with Alzheimer's and it got ugly very quickly. 
My dad's two brothers died very quickly to cancer. One had a brain aneurysm. The other died of um, cancer in the esophagus. My mother had a major thyroid issue. And of course, we know our world changed December 6, 1991, when my niece was born in our bathroom. But through all that, my father led us. And I asked him, I said, Dad, how did you do it? Because we wanted, your mother and I wanted to build on a rock. And as these storms came, we did not want you to suffer because of our unwise choices. That wisdom that my father had and led us as the priest of our home is biblical. But I'm not sure my generation and younger understand that principle. I pray that God will raise up young leaders I praise God that Zach is on our team, a millennial. And I praise God that there will be others who will rise up and understand the sacrifice to building on a rock, the sacrifice to the family, the sacrifice to the church community, and of course to their own leisure time. Building on a rock is not easy. Building on a rock will not come quickly. But we are encouraged by what Jesus said. In Matthew seven twenty four. Therefore, whoever hears these sayings of mine and does them. It's one not just a hear, but to be a doer. James talks about that. Not just a hearer of the word, but a doer of the word. We hear these words, and Jesus had just finished the sermon on the mount, the greatest sermon ever preached, and he has one more talking point. Therefore, whoever hears these sayings of mine and does them, I will liken them or I will compare them to a wise man who built his house on the rock. I ask you tonight, what are you building? What are you building on tonight? Hear those that build on a rock, Jesus calls you wise. Do you want to be wise tonight? Do you want to be wise? Do you want to have the self-discipline to build on a rock with a work ethic, integrity? As we raise our daughter, my wife and I want to have a daughter who has a work ethic. And I praise God. She's starting off on the right track. I praise God. That his word gives us this insight and calls it wise. Who builds on a rock. And look at what the result is here, guys. The rain descended, the floods came, the winds blew and beat on that house. And it did not fall. Tonight, we can be testifying about what God here today. Because guess what? It was raining hard in here. It was beaten on this house that God built. But we did not fall. We, as difficult as it was for me to preach today with evil eyes looking at me, at any moment wondering, wow, are they going to attack me? When there's different commotion that is going on, troubled souls, tormented individuals, Things that were happening, looking into the eyes of Pastor Joe as he's walking back and forth. And I'm sitting here wondering, Lord, what's happening? But you know, protect us. And to still preach the gospel. And to know, Lord, you're building this house. And we will not fall. We will persevere. Today, it's evidence that if we build on the foundation of God and His Word, our labor is not in vain. And God 
gets the blessing. It did not fall, for it was founded on the rock. Aren't you glad tonight? Aren't you glad tonight, praise the Lord, that PAG is founded on a rock, and his name is Jesus. But to those who hear this, but do not do them, Jesus says, but everyone who hears these sayings of mine and does not do them will be like a foolish man who built his house on the sand. You can choose to be wise or choose to be foolish. When we build on a rock and the storms of life are raging, we don't lose control. We come together just as we did today. God was working behind the scenes in so many areas. We have each other's back. We support one another. We care about one another in the front lines of ministry. Our eyes are turned upon the Lord. We recognize it is raining. We don't lose our patience or our love for thy neighbor, but instead we let God bring forth the victory. But to the fool, they don't do these things. They start to scream and shout and complain. They start to blame one another. They start to become uncertain, lose confidence with themselves, start to get frustrated all those kinds of things. Solomon tells us in Proverbs, those, all those attributes, all those characteristics define the fool. Do you guys know the consequence to a fool according to Solomon? Unexpected or sudden death. I'm proud for what God did today and who I serve with. It blesses me. I told my wife when we got home, there are a lot of places that would not have come out on the winning end, but we did. And that is because God has built this house, and he built it on a rock. We're not playing the card of a fool who built on a sand. The only place I've ever visited in my life where houses were built on sand is Nags Head, North Carolina, the Outer Bank. These houses are built on stilts. And uh, I, my uncle had one uh, there um, uh, right before you get to Cape Hatteras going south. I've been there numerous times, and he also owned one in a little place called Duck, North Carolina. And these houses, if, if you know anything about them, if an earthquake or a hurricane is coming, get off the outer banks. Okay? And if you have offended anybody, be careful because they might come with a chainsaw and cut out those stilts and down comes that house. And if you know anything about the outer banks, you do not drink the water. It is brown as this fabric. And the odor is terrible. You have to bring bottled water in to take a bath, to take a shower. The smell is just out of this world. Building on sand looks beautiful, though. It's some of the easiest houses to build. It's quick to build. It's quick to make a repair. But the problem is, when the rain descends, the floods come and the winds blow and beat on that house. It fell and great was its fall. Today, we didn't fall. And I'm proud to say God won. And I'm proud to say that as we go forth, there will be other tests. And I am fully confident God will protect us and guard us and be our blessing because he has built this house. Because there will be more heading our way. The adversary is not going to want a revival. He is certainly not going to want... Notice how many new people were at the altar today. 
and not just there kneeling, praying, sobbing, lamenting, crying out before God. He was working from that far corner all the way to this corner. That is amazing to me, what God was doing. That's a powerful thing. God was, people were praying in their chairs. And then when we had the second altar call, many of them came back to the altar to seek the face of the living God. And I believe we're going to start to see them come Sunday nights and Wednesday nights, men's and women's groups. I believe God's going to start to stir them, these young babes in Christ. And as they go from the milk to the solid food, they're going to want more of the word. And I pray we're going to be here to give it to them. But the adversary is going to come in too. But if we continue to build on the rock, we will continue to be blessed. Let's not start taking any shortcuts now. Let's instead continue to do what God has instructed us to do. And we will watch a revival break out before our very eyes. Take this same principle and take it to your home. Take this same principle and take it to your workplace or to your school. Take this same principle and watch God fight for you. And others may fall around you. Others may, well, they built up so quick. They, they, they're doing so much. Who wants a facade? Who wants something to grow quickly, but as soon as there's a problem, they get choked out, just as Jesus said what happened at the parable of the sower. Let's do it the right way. And watch what God does for us. Instead of falling greatly, we will be founded in the rock. And God will exalt us because we have loved his son and his word. And so it was when Jesus had ended these sayings that the people were astonished at his teaching. The audience was astonished. They were amazed, not only at this, but the entire Sermon on the Mount, Matthew 5, 6, and 7. They were astonished at his teaching. I ask tonight, are you astonished by what God is doing? Has your faith been reassured to you that God is protecting us, that God is blessing us in so many ways? Are we astonished tonight? by what we see before our very eyes. For he taught one, he taught them as one having authority and not as the scribes. Church, tonight I'm not teaching you of my own opinion. I am preaching and teaching you the word of God. I am teaching you how the adversary works, how he's hoping to deceive the human being, including the Christian. I am teaching you what will cause us to survive any type of attack and that God will bless us, that God will see us faithful in these last days. We will be equipped. We will have oil both in the jar and in the lights as we wait for the return of the bridegroom for his bride. Teaching you the same word, and I pray that God's Holy Spirit, I pray the ultimate authority of our Lord and Savior is speaking to you through these two messages. The question is, one more time, what are we building? Are we building in vain? Or are we building in faith? The question is tonight, are we considering the cost as we build? question is tonight, do we trust Jesus and his word to protect us, to guard us, to keep us dry when the rain is pouring and the winds are blowing? Church, I know it's not easy. 
I know we've got to tighten our belts, be ready to have an emotional encounter, but know one thing, God will fight our battles. Our job is to be a watchman and to do it not because out of obligation. We do it because we're letting God build and he's put us in positions to speak for him. Again tonight, what are you building? Can we build it? Really, let's let God build it. And as a result, the blessing will be eternal. The scripture says we are to lay up our treasures, not on earthly things, but on heavenly things. The scripture says that we as believers, if our treasure or where our treasure is, there our heart is also. If we build on the word of God, we will have treasures in heaven that are people that we have been used to build and grow the kingdom of God. We will have treasures that where we will spend eternity with. New names written down in glory. We will have treasures as we heard manifested tonight in this community that will cause the angels in heaven to rejoice. What are we building? Father, tonight we thank you for Psalm 127. Matthew 7, the Sermon on the Mount. Lord, we thank you tonight for your gifts of your Spirit being manifested. And we thank you, Lord, for keeping your word. Guarding the city. Our labor is not in vain. We're not going to leave here frustrated, emotionally broken. Lord, instead, we're going to leave here revived because, Lord, you showed up. Things could have been so different for Israel when the Assyrians knocked at the door. Things could have been different down in Judah when the Babylonians knocked on the door. Things could have been different today for us. But Lord, they weren't. Because we, the branches, are connected to the vine. You are our protector. You are our guard. And it is you, Lord, who's building this house. And our labor is not in vain. Lord, tonight, if there's someone here or someone watching who's never received Jesus Christ as Lord, Father God, may you reveal your son Jesus to them tonight. And may they respond by admitting they're a sinner, admitting, therefore, they need the Savior, Jesus Christ. By believing, Jesus, that you suffered on the cross and bled for their sin, but three days later you got up out of the grave, proving that you are the Savior of the world. Confess with their mouth, Jesus, you are Savior of their life. And if there's someone here, may they step out tonight publicly. Right now, they're on Facebook, right in the comment section, I need Jesus. If you're here tonight and you just want to come pray, you want to pray for God's blessing, protection. You want to pray and stand in the gap for someone who is building very unwisely. We know what the consequence will be. They will fall and fall greatly. And we have many who are in a dangerous position tonight. You want to come and pray for them. And pray for our community. Pray for our church. Pray for our land we live in this place called America.
Let's seek the face of the living God while he may be found in Jesus.
Jesus, you are our cornerstone. You are the chief cornerstone. As your scripture declares, Lord, build this house. Build this house, Lord God, I pray tonight. Continue, Lord God, to build the houses that we live in. Lord God, I pray for the priest of our homes. Lord God, I pray, Jesus, for salvation for the lost in the places we call home. Lord God, tonight we are building a house on the rock. And we do that because we love you. In Jesus' name. Learning to live. Lord God, we thank you tonight for men's and women's group. We thank you, Lord, tonight for the testimonies that were shared. Thank you, Lord, for a time of worship. Thank you, Lord, for Psalm 127 and Matthew 7. And Lord, thank you for what you did in this house all day long. Keep building, Lord. Keep building. But may we do our part. May we be found working on the building with a true foundation holding up the bloodstains for our Lord. Lord God, may we be faithful unto you and let you continue to build this house. And as you do, Lord, you're going to build and grow your kingdom on this earth and in heaven. Give us traveling mercies now, Lord, as we head home. Watch over us, protect us. Bring rest to our body tonight, Lord, as we prepare to go back to work and regular routine tomorrow. Lord God, but ultimately I pray as we continue to draw closer to one another in times of fellowship, study, testimony, worship, devotion, and prayer, such as this here tonight. More importantly, I pray, Lord, that we will continue to draw closer to you. For your word declares in James 4, 8, if we draw nigh or draw near unto you, you will draw near unto us. And Lord, all day long, you have been really, really close. We love you and we praise you, Lord. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. May God bless you all.